Internet friends, this is Magic Brad with Synergy Cafe and the Synergy Collaborative, and I've got a new friend. Her name is Barbara. It's Barbara Tibbetts, right? Yep, correct. Barbara Tibbetts. Hello. Where are you? Are you on the East Coast or West Coast? I live outside of Boston, about 40 minutes outside of Boston. Boston. I've never been to Boston, but I want to go there and have some baked beans. Oh, and have what? Baked beans. Boston baked beans. Yeah, okay. I don't think of Boston as that, but yeah. <laughs> no. I, I'm, I'm born and bred here. This is my home. Yeah, but that's like the older area where stuff all started. We spent some time out in New York and the East Coast, and it's pretty fascinating all yeah, that we, stuff. We have a we have a lot of history here, and mm -hmm. that's one of the reasons my my book, the Look Book, has been successful is the history that exists. One of my books is Concord Lincoln, Lexington, which is where the battle where it all began. Wow. Well, before we get into that, let's find more about you. Are you married? You got kids? All that kind of stuff? But you've lived in I Boston am, for a long, long time. I am, I am divorced for uh, over ten years, but I have three wonderful children: nineteen, uh, twenty, and twenty-five. Wow. So, yes, I um, I'm been the best job I could ever have is raising my kids. <laughs> Absolutely. My wife's got one. I don't have any, but uh, he's he's old and grown and all that kind of stuff. But I know that it could, they can be a lot of work because you. You got to deal with not just your issues, but theirs and their needs and your needs. And I, I, I love being around my kids. No, you know, every we all have our ups and downs. But my all three were home this past weekend, and I had a ball. Are you are you self employed in home office? I am self employed and sitting in my home office at the moment. Yes. Very cool. So then you can spend some time with your kids. I think that's important. Actually, that's sort of why my business developed was yep. when I was raising them um, after my divorce. I needed something to do. Um, keep my mind, mind, mind busy and being creative. And so I, I uh, began this business. It started with my daughter um, on a trip to Nantucket with her brownie troop. Mm -hmm. And we needed something for the girls to do to learn about the island. And I created this little book and someone said, you should market that. And I did. And now I have 15 different books and I have an app called Look Book Hunt. And I have now, right now I'm on iFundWomen for funding for my um, owl hunter. And all of these things have actually that's his. That's his name? His name is Hunter. Hello, yes. Hunter. <laughs> he he is, um, was named by my older son, actually. My kids have all sort of had a piece in, inside my business and uh, helping, me, helping me grow. And that we had a long list of names, and his name was the one who, who won. And usually it happens in this house that way. And my daughter does an awful lot for me. She does um, some photography for me, and she does my Instagram, and she does some other paperwork for me, and she's been involved with the books. And my younger son um, actually helps me do research. He would go out on different uh, trips I would take and help me sort of do research and, and uh, learn about the different places that are in my books. So when you do that, do you, do you kind of involve them in the business where you're actually then compensating them in some way or, or how does do they just work for free? It's a little bit of both. I, there's some compensation. There's, there's some just do this because mom needs your help. Um, and they're, they're extremely supportive on, uh, on that, but sometimes they need a little extra uh, cash and that, that will go there. I way. think that's so cool. I, I heard about a guy that, um, he, he, uh, paid his daughter X amount of money to do stuff. And then when she didn't do it, he pulled away the allowance and people thought, are you kidding me? You take your allowance away from your daughter. But it taught her that there's certain things she has to do to be compensated. And she learned all that entrepreneurial stuff. And that way you don't have to get a job and be a wage slave. <laughs> yeah, I'm not, I was not a big advocate for um, quote unquote allowance. So uh, weekly allowance. My kids may have a problem with that, but they always, they always had what they needed. And then as far as extra stuff, when, I, when they would get paid to do things for me, um, yeah. They have expertise that I didn't have, and they had the time to do it, and they want a little extra money, so they learned. I think I think my kids get that you have to work to earn a living, definitely. That's very cool, and that's something that's scalable, too, because you work harder and smarter, and you can actually make more rather than being stuck in that uh, defined amount. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah, absolutely. There's lots of ways to make money. You and I were just discussing that earlier. To, to, to make money isn't necessarily just going to a job from 9 to 5. Exactly. But sometimes people, because they're in that so long and they've, their their mentality has been programmed that way, they don't understand it. You know what I mean? They don't, like, I, I talk to some people that, oh, I don't really have any skills. Well, they're yoga instructors. They could easily do a YouTube thing and charge people how to learn different asanas and yoga. They're a math teacher. They could teach that. They could just 
there's ways of scaling things up so you can actually make a living because now it's no longer just local, it's global. I think people um, are starting to recognize that, but it's scary. It's scary to go out on your own and to have to pay the bills and to have to, you know, pay the the person who who published my books, um, you know, printed my books. I have to pay them and I have to pay the distributor and, you know, all those different things. It it definitely... um, is a, is a harder way to do it, but I believe mm-hmm. you can, you can absolutely do it yeah. and have fun doing it. I mean, I think that's really the key is I'm having a tremendous amount of fun. The people that I'm meeting, the things that I'm learning, the support I'm getting is amazing. Well, that keeps your uh, momentum going when you actually enjoy what you're doing or dreading it. So it gets you out of bed so you can keep that going, but it, it is a different mindset. It's not like, okay, I worked a week. Now give me a check. It doesn't work that way. It takes, I worked a week. Oh, I guess I got to work two weeks and I'll get a check later. And it grows. It's, it's almost like a farmer and a garden. It takes time for stuff to mature. And that's what I think a lot of people don't know, that maybe they shouldn't quit their day job right away and try something. They should build up to it. And then you'd be surprised at how you can, once you get that momentum going, and you, you have to take the time to learn certain things like save your receipts, take track your mileage, all that kind of stuff. Because if you don't do that, all of a sudden you get this big bill at the end of the month or the end of the year that the tax man wants his money. <laughs> and you yes, got to deal with that. Exactly. It gets education. I, I, I did exactly what you're saying. I spent um, seven years growing my business and I could do it when I chose to and I could um, have fun with it when I chose to. And then now that my kids have, you know, don't need me anymore, I have this business now that I can pursue. But I was very luck, very, very lucky and fortunate that my um, their dad supported us financially. So I was able to sort of get this off the ground. But it does come down to that. It comes down to how you earn a living and how you pay the bills. But the kids were home, like I said, were home this weekend, and I was working on a new um, fundraiser with my books for elementary schools. Let's and, let's um, talk a little bit about how the book actually works because it sounds like it's almost a, an experiential book. It's not just a book. It's no, it seems it's got no. more so to this it. Is what, so this is Freedom Trail in Boston. So if you come to Boston, you want to get a book. And in the back of the book, there are stickers. Okay. Oh, my wife would love this. <laughs> so as you go, she, your wife likes to try, try and so, favor your right hand side. So that, yeah, there you go. There you go. There you go. So, so as you go through the, the freedom trail and you see, you find the picture is a little write up about what it is. And then you place a sticker there to see that you found it. And it's the same on each page. Like that goes through it like that. And so it's really, it was designed for four through 12, but I'm finding a lot of other people will use it. Um, I've had women buy it for their husbands so they could shop and husbands were occupied. <laughs> I've had women do it on ladies trips as an activity and families, again, a whole family can get involved in it. So um, now I'm looking to um, help schools and, and help my business all at the same time. And so I sell the book to them for um, wholesale and then they turn around and can sell it to their school at retail. And it gets it right into the hands of who's, enjoying it which yeah, is that's cool yeah. that brings in that tactile learning thing too exactly cool. it engaged, when you're at the freedom trail think about when you were a child and your parents took you around to um, a historic site or anywhere and you were kind of like yeah this is great and the parents are like really engaged in all the history and everything and you're as a kid you're trying but you know your attention span sort of comes in and out the book helps engage you so the child before they would go out would look at the pictures and then as they're going through the Freedom Trail, specifically, depends on the location. I have um, 15 different books, so there's lots of different locations. And you, the, the child's like, oh, remembers, oh, I saw that picture. And so they're, they, they're looking, because kids look at things differently than sure. we do. They really do. They, they, they don't have, they're not worried about paying bills. They're not worried about all the other things that you and I are worried about. So they're able to really focus, and it, and it allows them to do that with so this book. Are you open to any ideas? I am always open to ideas. Okay, yeah. I will. I will put it out there because I just had. I thought of one: the possibility of bringing in the olfactory system, the scratch and sniff type sticker. Is that a possibility? Yeah. So that so so what would the smell be? Oh, I guess different things depends on what they find. Maybe they're going to an apple orchard or something. You scratch it and you actually smell the apples, and you bring in this this olfactory sense. That's that's really cool. I'm all, that's how my business has sort of um, evolved. Is everyone sort of got a suggestion or a or an idea, and I'm, and now I have an app, and that was that came from people saying, "Well, do you have an app?" And I'm like, "Okay, yeah, I have an app. Now I do." And it it so it I there's to that maybe there will be some um, smells because kids love that stuff. Yeah, there's there's another uh, guy locally here, Pete Bissonette. He's got a company called Learning Strategies and he wrote a book and I can't remember what the book is called. It's something like something in bourbon and Uh-oh. it's a it's not a drinking book, 
but it, but it's but it's a it's a, a scavenger hunt. He went and he hid something like ten thousand or fifty thousand dollars somewhere, and then you have to read the book to find. The, you have to travel all over the United States and get clues to find the fifty thousand dollars. Oh wow! I'll have to look that one up. I, I'm I'm also looking for ideas and ways to uh, to market my book and set up um, scavenger hunts. And I'm and with Hunter, like I feel oh. like he rise at the end, you know. And and so that's a, that's a that's a good idea to make. To, I could do that within my app, you know, because exactly. I could change it periodically. That's, I love that idea. I'm yeah. going to try that one. Absolutely, I like to share concepts because yeah. it's just fascinating what can be done with technology these days and all that kind of stuff. Absolutely, yeah. I, I'm boy, am I learning that. My kids laugh. They're like, when I go with a question about, you know, on my phone or my computer, they're like, "How did you do all that you're doing?" I don't know. I just you learn what you have to learn, I guess, when you have to learn it. Yeah, it's amazing. So I don't like to do these too long because time is a commodity that uh, is very valuable. So I like to just do this as an intro, and if people want to know more, they can contact you. And if you want to do another one of these about maybe some other project or something, I'm always open to doing more of these because this is the whole synergistic effect of uh, co-op sharing kind of thing. So could you tell us more about how to get a hold of you and, and learn about this, this these projects and things? Sure, sure. My uh, website is thelookbookhunt.com. And you can also find me um, at my at, on Facebook under The Lookbook Hunt. And you can also download my app. And that is Look Book Hunt. There is no the. And you need to leave a space in between the words. And I'm, that is very new. That's about a month old now. And I am um, putting more content in as, as we speak. And I'm looking for suggestions to people on the table that you would like me to go and visit and, and put in the app. And I'm also right now, two more weeks, I'm on iPhone Women, which is a uh, crowdfunding source for women founders. And I'm raising funds for Hunter. And you can get, you can be one of the first to have a hunter, or you can find my books on there and order a book through that to support support us on I Fund Women. Or we actually now have a hunter pendant, which is very exciting. That is also on on I Fund Women as well. So I'm sort of, I'm starting to get all over the place, which is really really fun. Well, it's really cool that you're kind of creating this icon of hunter, and it's very possible it could go in, you know, coffee cups, and it could be like the Nike swoosh. Everybody's wearing the hats with the Nike thing on. Why not hunter? Right. See, he's right on my books. You can see him. Hello, Hunter. <laughs> the inside of the book. Yes, yes. All righty then. Well, if you want to stick on here, we'll chat a little bit more, but I appreciate you taking the time on Synergy Cafe, and we'll, I will beam this up to the universe, as they say, and if you would share it synergistically, that'd be much appreciated. Thank you, Brad. It's been wonderful talking to you. Thank you. Peace. Happy hunting. <laughs>